What is good, everyone? How are you doing? If no one has told you this already, happy, 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 happy New Year. My name is David Oladaro, which is now have the privilege of being the lead pastor at the Gap Church, and welcome to a new year. Can we just make some noise? Come on. Um, I don't know about you, but we had an amazing crossover just about a week ago as we crossed over during the shaking. And we know that in this year, um, dead things have come to life and God, his spirit, Ruach, is breathing, is still breathing, and is gonna breathe upon all of our goals, all the promises in this year, 2024. And so we are super excited. Um, and so if you do not know, uh, this is the Gap Church where we are filling the gap through freedom and the truth. And we are based in Arlington, Texas. If maybe you just joined us for the first time. Welcome, what is up? I just wanna go ahead and get into our word of the year as you can see behind me. If you weren't with us over crossover, the word of the year for the Gap Church is this is the year of expressions. The year of what? The year of expressions. And so I wanna just go over that for just a brief amount of time. Let's just open our Bibles to 1 John 4, uh, 1 John 4, 7 to 12. 1 John 4, 7 to 12. I'm reading from the NLT, and so just follow with me if you can. Um, it says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son for us as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Verse 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Bless the reading of God's word. This scripture is very simple, and I love it so much because it's letting us know that, number one, that God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. Many of us know this by, by, by heart, John 3, 16. Um, and, and so it lets us know that, here's the thing, if you, if you love, you know God. If you do not love, you must not know God. We, so, we see that in general. Now, what is the kicker here that I want us to understand is this. It says that no one has ever seen God before. But here's the thing, every single day, people see us. If you are a believer, you have the spirit of God within you. Every single time they see us. And so when we now show this love that God gave to us through us to other people, it is a way of God's love being fully expressed. I don't know if y'all understand. That's the equation. And so because of the way that God showed his love to us by sending forth his son to die for us on the cross, we now, our benefits as the spirit has been poured upon each son and daughter, we now are benefits because we have received that love and now God lives within us. And so when we show love to others, it is a way of God's love being fully expressed. Come on. That's a revelation in itself. And so what I want us to understand is that this year, God is going to ask us to love like never before. Three people we're going, to ask, we're going to be asked to love this year. Number one, we have to love God more. We must love God more than ever before. I know that sounds so weird and cliche, but I want you to really think about it. When you are toasting another, another person that you want to date or you're chatting with someone, what, what do you do? You spend time with them. You're going out with him. I'm telling you this year, you have to go deeper with God, be more intimate with him, get to know him more, talk to him more, be in the secret place with him, spend time in his presence. We must love God more than ever before. We must know God. We cannot be loving, we cannot be loving an aspect of God. I want to just go ahead and just address that. What stop loving an aspect of God? What stop loving the healer side of God? What stop loving the prosperity side of God? What stop loving the deliverance side of God? No, we gotta love all of God, the God that corrects. We gotta love El Roy. We gotta love, we gotta love every side of him, El Shaddai. We gotta love every side of God this year. Get to know God and love him more. So we must love God even more this year. Number two, we gotta love ourselves. Come on. We must love ourselves a lot more this year. And some of us, this may hit home for you, but I want you to know that in knowing God, you get to know more about yourself, amen? In knowing God, you get to know more about yourself. Think about this, it says that if you love, you know God. So you're saying that my expression to someone else or my expression in general means that I have some level of relationship to God. Imagine that. So that means that I am definitely connected. What I do is connected to the Father. So who I am is connected to the Father. My identity is found in Christ. And so when we get to know God more and more and more, 
and we get to love him more and more and more, we begin to find love for ourselves because we begin to see who he called us to be, why we were created. We begin to see what our true identity is. We begin to see how he formed us in his image. So great. Come on. So we must love ourselves more this year. And number three, we must love each other more. What good is it to love God, love ourselves, and not love each other? That is automatically um, hypocritical. That's blasphemous. We must love each other as brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ, whether they're Buddhist, Muslim, Hispanic, uh, Asian. They don't look like you. Wherever they're from, you must love them. Despite belief, love them. The, here's the thing. When you do not love each other, you are stopping the full expression of God's love. It says, when we, because God is within us, now show this love to one another. That is God's love in full expression. So we must love each other this year more than ever. We must love each other more this year. And so there's just a couple of things I want to leave us with before uh, uh, we, we close out um, with this short time. Because there's some things that we're going to have to do this year um, like, like never before. Number one, we're going to have to obey. We have to obey. <laughs> Many of us know this. And some of us uh, who know, who have studied the Bible, who've um, been following Christ for a long time, you understand the power of obedience. Many people say that obedience, uh, obedience is God's love language. For some people that they like to refer to it as that. Obedience is God's love language. And, and, and I want you to understand that obedience is very important because God is going, to, is going to say, show me that you really love me. God is going to be like, here's the thing, love, love is tested. Come on, love is tested. Love must get tested. Love, love must be tested. Some of you are going to have to submit yourselves to God this year because God is going to ask you to obey him and do specific things. Let me just let you know this. The love of God restrains and compels. It restrains and compels. Many of us this year, because we are under this house and we are, we are, we are believing that God is going to, this is going to be a year of expressions, we are, going to be, we are going to be constrained and compelled more than ever this year. What am I saying? We are going to be constrained. We're going to want to do so many things this year as far as going off on somebody who deserves it, going off on our significant other, going off on that customer, going off on that coworker, lying, being dishonest, seeing that things are going to happen and not saying anything about it. But the love of God is going to constrain us and say, you can't say that thing. The love of God is going to constrain us and be like, well, you got to say that thing. The love of God is going to constrain us and be like, mm -mm, don't talk. The love of God is going to constrain us and be like, whoop, I know this is how you feel, but you're going to have to let it go. But it's also going to compel us. The love of God is going to compel us like never before. To, to, have to, to have to say sorry to some people. It's going to compel us to, to be generous to some people that we normally would not be generous to. The love of God is going to compel us to buy some things for some people that normally we wouldn't buy some things for. The love of God is going to compel us to let some people uh, a, little bit, a little bit closer into our lives that normally we would have shut the door. The love of God is going to compel us to, to really speak life into some people. And so be ready to be compelled and constrained because it requires obedience. God's going to require you to do some things like never before. Will you obey? Remember, slight obedience is still disobedience. Slight obedience is still disobedience. So be ready to obey God more than ever before. He's going to ask you to do a lot of things this year. He's going to ask you to say, if you really love me, what is it? You obey my, you obey my commandments, right? But if you really love me, you would do this thing. If you really love me, you would, you would go the extra mile for this person. Number two, not just obedience, what we're going to have to do this year, we're going to have to sacrifice more than ever before. Many of us are hearing this and they're like, oh, man. Ah, oh, man, here we go again. Uh, we're talking about sacrifice. We're talking about money, I guess. We're, <laughs> we're not talking about that. Many of us love the scripture, John 3, 16, and we'll, we'll continue to chant it until we, we're in the grave. But uh, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his, gave his only begotten son. That's a tongue twister. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the blank that he gave. You cannot have love without sacrifice, people. Love and sacrifice come together. It's, it's, it's a match made in heaven. You cannot have love without sacrifice. 
I'm telling you, God's going to require you to sacrifice a lot this year. I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about time. Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your ego. Ooh, there's going to be some rooms you're going to be in that you may know all the answers. You may be the person that has the most followers. And God's going to say, mm-mm, sit down. You're going to be in some places where, where you know you should be sitting in the front, but no one comes to you. God's going to be like, sacrifice your pride. This ain't it. Sacrifice it. Sacrifice your pride. God's going to require you to, to sow into some people's lives. God, you're going you're, you're to have no money in your account. Or let me just say, you may not have as much money as you wish. And, and God's going to say that, I need you to, to buy this for this person. And you're going to be like, God, but why, why would I buy this for this person? They, they, they don't even like me. They don't even talk to me. They don't even. God's going to say, I need you to sacrifice this year. God's going to require you to sacrifice some things toward him. Sacrifice some relationships. Do you really love me? Ooh. Sacrifice some friendships. Come on. Sacrifice some business ideas. Sacrifice some dreams you may have. Because God is going to be like, well, that you, you have me written all over, but that's not really me. That's all you. You, you said I'm in that, but I, I, I'm not in that. That's all you. If you want to do that, go ahead and do that. But if it's not me, God's going to require you to sacrifice. He sent forth his only begotten son because he loved us. And I want you to understand this. God's going to require you to sacrifice your best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, ooh, his only, his only, his only. There's some things that you're going to have to sacrifice this year that may be your only, ooh, your only. I'm sorry, remember I'm hyping myself up. Your only, the only money in your account, the only t-shirt in your business, <laughs> the only available date in your calendar, come on, the only, the only extra this, come on. God is going to require you to sacrifice the only, the best. Be ready for it. Number three, God is going to require you to forgive this year. You, you, there's some things that are stopping you from loving others. There's, there's some things that are stopping you from fully expressing his love to others. And, and, and so God's going to require you to forgive. Forgive what that person did to you. Forgive what, what that friend did. There's some people that you've left in 2023 and you've said that, you know what, I'm going to 2024. God has breathed upon my plans and I don't, even gotta, I don't even gotta worry about that stuff. God is saying, I want you to know that they're gonna come back in 2024 and you're gonna have to forgive because this love must be expressed. You gotta learn some things, God is saying. You gotta learn some things. And so be ready to forgive like never before. Get, let, just let go of the malice. Let go of it, let go of it. God is saying, you are going to have to forgive this year like never before. Forgive that person for what they did. Forgive that mother for what they said to you, for how they shamed you. Forgive that dad for all the things he said, all the comparisons that he brought forth your way. Forgive that childhood friend for the way they took advantage of you. Forgive that leader. I know it's going to be hard. Forgive that person that caused church hurt upon you at some place. Forgive that house. Forgive that place. Forgive them. Forgive them. Imagine if we had a God that didn't forgive. Oh my goodness. Will we really be able to say he loves us? Your love will be tested this year. How well can you forgive? The last thing I have here is that this year we must be generous. We must be generous as people. I'm sure y'all think I'm going, talking about finances again. But I'm saying that we must have a heart of generosity as people now. There's a scripture in James that said this, what good is faith if faith does not come with deeds? What good is faith if there's no deeds attached to it? What good is it me saying that I have faith or I want to love and there's no deeds to show for it? We are going to have to be generous. What does that mean? There's some people that are gonna be around you that are in heavy need. Whether that may, may be financially, they may need you to help, help, help them move into their house, mow their lawn, <laughs> take care of their kids, you know, whatever it may be, if you have the means and can afford to help them out, God is going to require you to do it. He's going to ask you to do it. Oh, man, I just hear this so clearly. God is saying that it's going to be a test for some of you to be generous this year. Because God's going to bless you so much this year. God's going to put so many things in your hands. And here's the thing, you're going to think it's yours. Ooh, 
You're going to think it's yours. But God is saying, I'm putting things within your hands that are for somebody else. I'm putting abundance in your hands that is for somebody else. I'm blessing you for you to be a blessing. I'm expressing my love to you through the, through the aspect of finances for you to express my love in full expression to somebody else through finances. Understand that you have to be generous to share. Some of you might be generous to, to, to your neighbor. Some of you might be generous to the church. Come on, kingdom financiers. We need it. We don't mind. God is faithful. <laughs> but understand generosity is going to have to be expressed this year to show love. As I'm closing, I just want you to know this, that this year is going to be a great year, of course. And as we are calling this the year of expressions, understand, lastly, that we cannot expect the manifestations of God's glory, of God's power, of miracles, signs, and wonders if there's no love. Understand that. If we look all through the Bible, all through Scripture, we see that what took place before the manifestation of God was his love. Because God loved blank so much, he gave. And so my challenge for us this year, as people that are part of the Gap Church, are you just watching? You must love God more, like I said, love yourself more and love others more. Because we cannot expect God to do anything at any Sunday service, at any small group, at any deeper night, at any conference, at anything, if there's no love. God is love. If we love, we know God. And so just as the song says, more love, more power, more of you in my life, that is the equation. More love means that we know more of him. More love equates to more power. I'm not saying we're doing this as a transactional perspective. No, no, no. I'm saying that understand that we cannot expect good things from God without love being there first. What good is it? It says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, uh, I think Paul says, it says, what good is it for me to preach to be able to have faith that can move mountains if there is no love. It says in scripture that if there is no love, I am nothing. It doesn't say I have nothing. It says I am nothing. And so understand with all the miraculous things that we want God to do in the gap this year, we will be nothing if there's no love. And so I leave you with that uh, to let you know and to encourage you that we must love this year. And so I just pray that upon every single person this year, that God help us to love each other and help us to love you more. Help us to be obedient. Help us to sacrifice. Help us to forgive. Help us to be generous, God. Give us a sensitivity, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, God, help us to be able to really love more and more and more, God. And we declare that we shall see the manifestation of your power, God. Because we know that more love, more power. More of you in our lives. Come on. Amen. The last thing I just want to say as we go, a couple of things we have going for the rest of this month, like I mentioned earlier. Number one, We'll be having our first service of the year, January 14th, coming up. And so please be there. We have two services, a 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. service. And so be there for our first Sunday back as we are starting a new series on culture. I don't know the, I don't know the title yet, so, but it's culture. We're, ta we're talking about uh, culture um, for the Gap Church, culture um, for this year. Um, we want to start from the right foot. Culture is so important. You see what Jesus did in three years. Jesus came to establish kingdom culture. And so we're going to be talking about culture for the for the for January this first month because we know that it's going to really set us off for the rest of the year. Um, not just that, but we have some more stuff going on this month. Of course, we have, um, uh, for those who do not know, we have a prayer and fast. I think it's about three to four days towards the end of the month. And so be ready for that. We, we, we're, we're going right back into it. We don't stop. Come on, we do not stop. And so January is going to be a pretty good month for everyone. And I want you to know that. Be excited because um, this year is going to be amazing. Our year of expressions. Either way, everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this short time. And um, I look forward to seeing you all next week by God's grace. If you are not a part of us locally, I look forward to you joining us next week online. And, um, and God bless you. Be praying for us, everyone. Be praying for the ministers. Be praying for the leaders. Be praying for me. Be praying for us as a house as we are going into this year. Um, Join faith with, with us at any moment, any moment in your, in, your, in your day, any moment in your week that you think of the gap church, just pray for us. Um, but either way, thank you so much. Have an amazing rest of your time. God bless you. And uh, happy new year once again.